All right, so I just wanted to show you guys some examples of brushes, symbols, stuff like that, so that you can see some different ways that you can use the things that you've learned as a part of introduction to technical flats. So you can see in this example of this dress that the all of the like curves and fullness and ruffles are all created with individual lines. All of these pieces aren't connected. So filling this shape with a color is not going to yield the best results. Let's just show you here. Even if I send this to the back, because all of these shapes um, in the outline aren't filled or aren't connected, you're going to end up getting these kind of like crazy things that are happening. Similarly, all of the ruffles have been created with individual lines, which not only doesn't look um, uniform, but it also takes a ton of time to create. Alternatively, you can do something like this example where you can take and create brushes that are the ruffles. So just by drawing this line, taking the time to create the brush and then just drawing this line and then using your brush um, panel over here, you can see that I've created this ruffle brush and it makes it so much easier to use it throughout the sketch, especially if you're doing several different styles that all kind of have the same thing. Um, I also did something similarly here and then just expanded um, the brush in order to make some edits to it, but the basic outline of it was there for me, which is great. And you can combine different brush brushes to create the look that you're going for. So this is a different brush. You can see that here. You can make these buttons into symbols and just quickly pull them out of your library. Um, super, super simple. And the outline is um, completely connected. So filling it in with color is much easier. You could create um, a symbol out of these bows if they were grouped together, just like we did with the buttons. That's a great thing to use as a symbol because it's super easy to just pull it out of your symbols and um, use it across different sketches. You can also create stuff that is um, a little bit more complicated, like a zipper pull, something like this, um, a zipper head, and use it again um, amongst a lot of different sketches. I believe I actually used it in one that I'll be showing here in a second. Um, creating different brushes to show um, the different types of stitching. These are obviously leggings. If you've ever owned a pair of leggings or looked at a pair of leggings, you know that they have a different type of stitching. And just really paying attention to those details of what your garment is made of. It's a huge, huge factor in creating technical sketches and making sure that they are as accurate as possible. You can also change the way that you draw things in order to convey the fit of the garment. So for these leggings, you can tell by the way that they're drawn that they're gonna be form-fitting, they're gonna hug the figure, as opposed to these sort of loose-fitting pants that are a little bit more billowy and less, less form-fitting. All right, and then you can even, once you practice a lot and you're you get used to creating all of these different things, you can start to create more complicated um, pieces to go into your sketches. So, I mean, this in and of itself is an entire graphic art piece that has just been scaled down and used as a trim. And you can also portray different things in different ways, like taped seams are obviously going to be, you know, a big, large piece of taping that's taped over the jacket um, and just paying attention to again those little details like draw cords. So there are tons of different ways that you can create your technical sketches and really it just you know practice makes perfect and taking the time to create a brush or symbol at the beginning can save you a ton of time in the long run.